today on the TMZ Podcast. Hello and welcome to the TMZ Podcast. I'm Wild, and today I am here with Shannon. Let's go. Shannon. Hey. Hello. Okay, first of all, let me tell the people this. Charlie <laughs> Cotton still works here. Yes. He is still the host of the TMZ Podcast. Charlie is sick this week, y'all. People get sick. It's cool. Mm-hmm. It's the winter time. Um, so I'm filling in for Charlie until he gets back. But Shannon. Wild. Hello. What's up? Shannon is one of the producers <laughs> in our sports department. So exactly. Shannon knows all things sports. Exactly. We have some, uh, a crazy sporting event went down last night. But Shannon was explaining to me this morning that it ain't that serious. It's not that serious. So we're going to talk about Draymond Green and the chill cold that he puts uh, Rudy Gobert in. Yes. And we're going to talk about uh, more sports news. Shannon, I really, I really tailored this show for you today. No, you didn't. Because Travis I, Kelsey <laughs> and Jason Kelsey have a new Christmas song. You're lucky it's Christmas because that's my favorite holiday. But if, yeah, that's, we're just going to go from there. Okay. <laughs> but the big story. It's- Will Smith has come out and denied allegations that he had sex with Dwayne Martin. So this is a very strange, st- it's strange, Shannon, let me tell you. So. A man who goes by Brother Bilal, he claims he was Will Smith's assistant for some time. He did an interview with Tasha K. We all know Tasha K. She's a YouTuber, blogger, the unwind of unwind with Tasha K fame. Mm -hmm. He did an interview with Tasha K. And Bilal claims that when he was working on a Hollywood set back in the day, he was looking for Will Smith. Dwayne was also there. They were both on the set at the same time. He was in charge of kind of like overseeing and handling them. That happens a lot in Hollywood. You have like people to bring you to set or bring you food or whatever. So Bilal was essentially handling both of them. He said he could not find Will or Dwayne. This is all his allegations. He alleges he couldn't find either one of them. And then he went to Dwayne's dressing room. And then this happened. So I I opened the um, door to Dwayne's dressing room. And that's when I see Dwayne and having anal sex with Will. Let me process that for a second. There was a couch, and um, Will was bent over on the couch, and Dwayne was standing up, killing him. Murder. Like, murder. It was murder in there. Mm, I have multiple thoughts, but Shannon, I'll let you go first. First of all, Will should have slapped him (laughs) and not Chris Rock. (laughs) Speaking of slap, it's like... (laughs) I'm just saying, for him to be a best friend of years... How are you coming out saying stuff like that? And honestly, it's nobody's. Even if he was getting murdered or smashed by Dwayne, it's nobody's business. Let the man do what he... I'm tired of the slander for Will Smith. Leave that man alone. It does seem like, for whatever reason, society is piling on Will Smith. So Will Smith's rep has come out and, like, adamantly denied the entire thing. He said the statements are unequivocally false. Um, They also suggested that Will may be seeking legal action against Bilal. Because this is according to Will's team, a completely made up and fabricated story. Um, it's interesting though, because it's, I'm looking at this twofold because one, you claim to be someone's best friend and a long time assistant. So it's kind of betrayal on that part, but also I just, I'm a little bit, I don't want to say upset, but I feel like Will Smith should have ignored this entire thing. And I know that I feel like Will Smith is probably feeling the heat and the pressure of constantly being like, berated on social media and having like things thrown around about yes, him. He's regard- always defending himself. In regards to his relationship with Jada and their messy situation. So I think he might have felt the need to come out and say something. But like, I don't really feel like Will Smith had to address this. But do you think if he didn't, people would have been like, wow, it's true. He didn't say nothing. No, I think if he didn't, it would have been a story that circulated online for like two days and then we would have acted like it never happened. Like, I tell people all the time, if I am ever famous, I am taking a Wendy Williams approach to everything. (laughs) Do you remember when (laughs) Wendy Williams was in the thick of her divorce and her husband was photographed with another woman Mm -hmm. and she got on that damn television show every day and said nothing Nothing, nothing. for weeks? Yeah, it was a smart move. I'm I'm not responding. It, It could be true. Like, I, I'm still business. not responding to things that I feel right. like are my business and not anyone else's business. Now, like I said, Will Smith and his team has denied it at all. Dwayne Martin, for his part, has not come out and said anything about it. It only recently just published. Um, But if I was Dwayne, I would say nothing. Like, I'm really big on not addressing rumors that you don't want to circulate. Because, again, once Will Smith addresses it, it was on Tasha K. It was circulating online, so it was big. But, like, once Will Smith addresses it, it is now a story. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just up. He made it bigger than what it was. But it's, like, still, even, like I said, even if he was having relations with Dwayne, mm-hmm. it's none of our business. That's why I'm confused on why this dude 
even came out and just like randomly talking about Will's sex life. Like, mm -hmm. and you're supposed to be his best friend. What kind of best friend are you? Uh, 40 years? Uh, it's weird. No, something's, some, no. I don't know if it's clout chasing because I've seen that with social media nowadays. Mm -hmm. Clout chasing is one of the biggest drugs right now. Mm -hmm. People will say anything just to get a little bit of fame. And that might be the situation, especially with Tasha K. But, you know, I, I just, I feel bad for Will. Will's been going through it for the last, what, couple of years? And he's the Fresh Prince. Do you feel bad like, for Will? Yes, I do. You, why, you don't? No, I do feel, <laughs> I, I mean, I, <laughs> I these things are sad, but I don't, I don't really feel bad for rich people like that, Shannon. Oh, because they crying in their mansion. Uh-huh. They crying exactly. in their Bentley. Yes, they exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am. I'm just. I'm really one of those people that like. You know, what, what's the saying? Lion don't concern themselves with the opinions, the thoughts, the beliefs, or the allegations from damn sheep. Will Smith, <laughs> you don't gotta respond to this. I still love you, Will. Even if you did what happened with Dwayne, I still love you. And Above the Rim is still one of my favorite movies. Oh, uh, I do feel like there are two things in the world that is never any of our business: who you sleep with and how you spend your money. Exactly. Unless you're doing something creepy or you ain't paying your taxes, then we ain't your business. But like otherwise. <laughs> but don't you find it weird how like. You know, like people, what they do behind closed doors, like sex and mm -hmm. their sexual preference, is now an announcement. Like, I, 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 that's just me. I find it weird. Yeah, it is how all weird. You, who you're sleeping with and who you choose want to sleep with is like news. Like, yeah, I, I don't care. Like, I don't. Yeah, that's just me. Yeah, it shouldn't even be a conversation. It honestly, shouldn't. so do what you do, Will. Shame on you, brother. Blah. He's still the Fresh Prince, though. <laughs> all right, <laughs> Shannon. Oh God. The Golden State versus. The Timberwolves. Am I saying that right? Yes, I you're do saying not that know right. sports. You got it right. I'm proud uh, okay, of you. Okay, good. Did the good Golden job. State versus Timberwolves game went down last night. And I looked at this and I thought, oh man, this is like, it's a Shaolin showdown going down right on the basketball court. Like, but Shannon is our intrepid. It was sports a little enthusiast. A little scuffle. All right, Shannon, break down what happened, start to finish, what went down. So basically, I guess Clay, Clay Thompson and Jaden McDaniels got into it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they tell us who team is on who team because we don't know. We don't. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot. So Clay Thompson, who's on the Warriors, mm -hmm. he got into a little, little pushy, shovey thing with Jaden McDaniels. He's on the Timberwolves. Mm -hmm. So they got into a little scuffle in the middle of the court, and then Rudy Goldberg came in to take Clay off of his teammate. Draymond retaliated, did the same thing, and took him off his team. And that's how I looked at it. But, of course, people said, oh, my God, Draymond went crazy and did the whole choke. He tried to kill him, blah, blah, blah. And I get it because Draymond has this reputation of being aggressive. I mean, he just punched the hell out of Jordan Poole not too long ago. Right. We but isn't this his second time getting ejected from a game in, like, recent? It's basketball. I'm sorry. That, that I'm kind of, like, old school 90s Shaq Barkley, you know, fight type of girl basketball so like this was not like for people to say this was a brawl and oh my god it's almost malice in the palace ain't no okay, that, way that's drama it was not malice in the palace level but, <laughs> but was, i'm just saying people were saying that oh this is crazy i'm like it was uh, it was a chokehold one though. through ten it was it was a 5.6 not you rating right the foul shannon it was a chokehold though like all right so it, there's two dudes going at it and then you see like the the people from each team coming in trying to like break it up Allegedly. Well, yeah, honestly, but I, like, I, I, I mean, I want to say I applaud Draymond for choking him, but I applaud him for defending his teammate. Because, like, Deion Sanders, I don't know if you heard this, he lets his players fight. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, he lets his, his players fight during practice and everything. He feels like if you don't fight or defend your teammate, that's a problem with loyalty. So seeing Draymond defend Clay Thompson, I'm fine with it. Maybe the choke was a little too much. He could have just grabbed his jersey. Yeah, whatever. I think it maybe like Goldberg's a big dude. He is a big dude. So does Draymond. But still. And Draymond's just a very aggressive kind of player. That's why they love him so much in Golden State. He's mm -hmm. the heart of that team. No disrespect to Steph Curry or Klay Thompson, but his aggression and his attitude is what makes him him. So Thompson and McDaniels were both assessed double technicals? Mm -hmm. I don't really know what that means. Tell me. Is that like It's double? a bad file. Oh, okay. So they got bad files. Like bad. Files. And then... Draymond was hit with a two foul all automatic ejection. Yes. Of course. What does that mean, Shannon? He's out of here. For the game. Yes. All right. So he's probably what... gonna get suspended or maybe a little fine, but I I because of his history, he'll probably get suspended. Do you is this like a common occurrence in sports in basketball particularly? Like what typically happens in these situations where players get violent or not? Players get physical on the court. <laughs> I was about to say it was not. It was physical, though. <laughs> it was physical, but usually the NBA looks at it, they investigate, and they either throw out some fines or suspensions. I don't see anything 
crazy. Me personally, I'm not Adam Silver, but I don't see anything going crazy. Like maybe a one game suspension or a fine. But that's about it. I mean, like, I've seen worse. Maybe that's what it is. It's like Malice in the Palace I, w- I watch. So it's like that's one of the craziest things I've ever yeah. seen in sporting events. Same. So for people, like I said, to call this insane to me, it's like uh, it was crazy, but it wasn't like, oh, my God. All right, Shannon. I'm sorry. Maybe they I'm say crazy myself. So <laughs> they call you up right now and they say, Shannon, you are the acting NBA commissioner. Tell us what is what are the consequences for Draymond Green? What do you say, Mrs. Shannon Adam Silver? A fine. Just a fine? <laughs> How much? How much are we talking? Mm, a couple thou. No suspension? It'd be all right. Rudy, you ain't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy, you are not hurt. You a big boy. Wow. Sports is a tough world, man. I'm like, all I do is I ride horses, and that's like the extent <laughs> of my athletic abilities. <laughs> that's just, I, I'm just speaking for myself. Oh, that, wow. That's me. I, I, they're gonna get. He's gonna get suspended one game. But if it was me, fine, just find him. But I think, like I said, the history and with the recent thing with Jordan Poole is gonna, yeah, you know, come back to haunt him. So, uh, all right, Shannon, we'll have you back when the hammer is laid down. I'll be like, I don't see you tripping. He didn't do nothing. <laughs> all right, last story, and it's it's sports related. I told you, Shannon, this is a sports show today. It's not every time we have <laughs> our sports people from our sports department this here. Next, we try to do a little. This next topic, really, it is. It's definitely sports related. Okay. It's more of a combo story. <laughs> Travis combo. Kelsey. I love combos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is a good combination for you. <laughs> Travis Kelsey and his brother Jason Kelsey. They have partnered up for a Christmas song. Joy. Do you not like Christmas music? I love I sing Christmas music all year round. I love Ask Christmas Casey. Music. I sing jingle bells every day. All right, so they <laughs> Jason recruited Travis for this song. It's on the upcoming The Philadelphia Eagles has a holiday album, which is like the greatest thing in the world. I am from Philly, and let me tell y'all, we can use all the holiday cherry we can get. Like it's just uh, the holidays in Philadelphia and on the East Coast are like the most amazing time of the year. So anyway, the Philadelphia Eagles, they have a holiday album coming. And Jason and Travis have a song. Here's a little bit of that song. In the drunk tank, an old man said to me, won't see another one. And then he sang a song. I'm really mad. Wild over here just swaying. You don't like it? <laughs> he just, it's, he in it, y'all. Y'all. It's wild, y'all. Do you, the people in the room, do you guys not like it either? Oh, man. Well, it's called A Fairy Tale of Philadelphia. I think it sounds amazing. Like, that was Jason that y'all heard singing there. He sounds so good. Like, it was given, like, it's the most wonderful time. You know that, you like. You sounded better. But you know that, like. I hear I'm you. I'm dreaming. Like, I like that, like, kind of rustic, a little old school. A little country. Like, yeah. I thought it was. It literally sounded like a Christmas song to me. I give anybody credit who sings live or sings period. Out, yeah, sings period. Okay. But I think you're a little biased because you're from, I'm from Philadelphia, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not a Philly Eagles fan. But I applaud them for doing it because they done this. Uh, well, he did it before with mm-hmm. the Eagles last time. Um, I applaud it. Um, I love Christmas, so I'll never say ill. I don't want to listen to. It. I love Christmas music. I do want to hear Travis's part, but you know what? I made this song better though. What? Travis Kelsey's girlfriend on it. A Taylor Swift feature. Yes. They can't afford that, though. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I don't think Taylor would love him that much yet. She'd go, mm. I don't know. The way she was kissing that man at that concert, I was like, damn, Taylor. Or better yet, how about we have Travis jump on Taylor's could do Christmas that. song. That'd be dope. Christmas Tree Farm, That'd be which dope. is a really good That'd Christmas be song. I have to hear Travis, though. Is he on there? He's on there. What is he, what is he doing? Singing. Why you look like you're upset? Because I only only can play seven seconds, Shannon. This is a show. We have to clear things around here. <laughs> Stop asking for the Travis part. My bad. Oh, but Travis did say he said, "Look, dude, I did not want to hear myself sing like that. I've got more of the rock voice," is what he says. He admits that like singing is not really his thing, but he he gave it he gave it what he could. So Jason's on the song, Travis is on the song, and I love the song. It's already on my playlist. It just released today. I mean, I will never, I love the brotherly love. And they all, I mean, maybe they need to come up with an album together, do a music video. I hope a music video comes out for it, too. That'd be dope. You want a whole album and a I want music a whole video? Al- it, you want to start something? You better finish it. You better do a whole <laughs> album. You better put Taylor in it. Okay. All that stuff. She could be an elf and they could be, you know, Travis could be Santa. I like or that. Or she could be Mrs. Santa. 
Claus. And then Jason could be the <laughs> elf. And they can do all that, you know? I love okay. Christmas. All they right. should. All right, Shannon, last question before we get out of here. Uh-oh. What's your favorite Christmas song? That's tough because I have a favorite Christmas song by each musician. Like Mariah why, Carey. Why do you have multiple Christmas musicians? I told you I up? love Christmas. Like, okay, <laughs> give me your all-time favorite Christmas song. Go. Uh, Jackson 5, Why Don't You Give Love on Christmas Day. Oh, that's a throwback. Yeah. Okay. I told you I'm a big Christmas song for that, but that's one of my favorite ones. Wow. I'm surprised you know that song. Yes. I'm black, <laughs> Shannon. <laughs> All right, y'all. My favorite Christmas song is All I Want for Christmas, of course. But <laughs> Oh, my God. That's so cliche. Uh, wild. Okay, whatever. Well, <laughs> we're going to get out of here. Thank you so much, Shannon. This of was course. fun. It was, definitely. And hopefully Charlie Cotton will be back tomorrow so y'all can stop yelling at us in the YouTube comments saying, where's Charlie Cotton? <laughs> where's right. Charlie Cotton? We're going to get out of here. We'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye.